so we'll start with uh, paper one of may june 2022 now see the first question is based on indices so here all you have to do is you just have to write it at index form and get the values of a b and c so what we'll do we'll just write p to the power of 1 by 2 into q to the power of 2 by 3 into r to the power of minus 3 upon now this 2 will get distributed over p and q so it's going to be p to the power of 2 into q to the power of minus 2 into r to the power of minus 1 now you just have to combine all p q and all together uh, all together so it's going to be p to the power of 1 by 2 minus 2 into q to the power of 2 by 3 minus minus 2 so it's going to be plus 2 into r to the power of minus 3 plus 1 so at the end you will get p to the power of uh, minus 3 by 2 into q to the power of 8 by 3 into r to the power of minus uh, sorry r to the power of minus 2 so the values of a b and c would be a is equal to minus 3 by 2 b is equal to 8 by 3 and c is equal to minus 2 now the next question is based on kinematics so here they have given that a particle moves in a straight line such that its displacement from a fixed point at time t is given by this whatever so find the exact speed of the particle when t is equals to 1 so all you have to do is you just have to differentiate it now here s is 1 plus 3t to the power of minus 1 by 2 so you just have to differentiate its ds by dt which is going to be what so here uh, we'll have to apply chain rule so minus 1 by 2 will go down so it's going to be minus 1 by 2 into 1 plus 3t to the power of n minus 1 so minus 1 by 2 minus 1 into derivative of whatever is inside so it's going to be 3 so the answer is minus 3 by 2 into if you want you can write this thing as 1 upon 1 plus 3t to the power of minus uh, 3 by 2 like this so now what they are asking they are asking you to find the speed at t is equals to 1 so all you have to do is you just have to substitute t is equal to 1 in this so t is equals to 1 if i substitute i'll get minus 3 by 2 into 1 by 1 plus 3 so 4 4 to the power of 3 by 2 now this is all indices so 4 to the power of 3 by 2 so it's going to be square root of 4 which is 2 2 to the power of 3 8 so it's going to be minus 3 by 2 into 1 by 8 so it's going to be minus 3 by 16 that's your speed now, of course since it is speed so it has to be 3 by 16 like obviously we'll have to consider the mod so speed overall is going to be 3 by 16 what is it meters per second yeah meter huh, meter per second so that's your answer now the next part is they are asking you to find the acceleration of the particle i mean sorry show that the acceleration of particle will never be zero so for acceleration again you have to differentiate again so it's going to be what so here uh, ds by dt was minus 3 by 2 into 1 plus 3t to the power of minus 3 by 2 correct because of this thing so here all you have to do is you just have to differentiate again for the acceleration so d2s by dt square is going to be minus 3 by 2 constant outside this i'll just pull it down so it's going to be into minus 3 by 2 into 1 plus 3t to the power of minus 3 by 2 minus 1 so it's going to be minus 5 by 2 and of course since it is a chain rule so we'll have to differentiate this 1 plus 3t as well so we'll multiply by 3 so overall your acceleration would be minus 3 minus 3 9 into 3 27 so it's going to be 27 by 4 1 plus 3t to the power of minus 5 by 2 now the thing is here see t is always greater than or equal to 0 of course time cannot be negative so here since 1 plus 3t to the power of minus 5 by 2 is always positive so therefore it will never be 0 now next based on functions a function f is such that f of x is ln of 2x plus 1 for x greater than minus 1 by 2 there is a reason why it is greater than minus 1 by 2 because in log you cannot even have 0 like 0 is also not possible so just a simple example if i give you root x and ln x so here the domain of x when it whenever it is root x it is always greater than equal to 0 when it is ln x it's just greater than 0 0 is also not fine obviously you can understand through graph as well uh, range of f so obviously when I talk about this ln, so ln can take all real numbers, so it's going to be f of x belongs to 
real numbers. Now a function g is such that g of x is 5x minus 7 for all real numbers. Find the exact solution of the equation g of f of x. Now see g of x is, one second I will write here, g of x is 5x minus 7. All I have to do is I'll just have to replace this x with f of x. So g of f of x would be what? So see here I'm replacing this x and this x. So I'm replacing this x with f of x which is 5 ln 2x plus 1 minus 7. And this they have given is equal to 13. So we'll just have to solve it. So we'll get 5 ln 2x plus 1 is equal to 20. So your ln 2x plus 1 file I'll move to the other side it's gonna be 4 and now 2x plus 1 so use the tick mark rule so here I generally say this tick mark rule so if I have a by a to the power of b is equal to c so if I want to write this in terms of log so all you just all you have to do is just use this tick mark rule so b is equal to log c and base a similarly if I want to convert log a to the base b is equal to c so when you have to use uh, like again you will have to use tick mark rule so here you just have to write a is equal to b to the power of c you can see that b is going up this a is going down and this c will go in power so here also b is equal to log c to the base a so 2x plus 1 is equal to e to the power of 4 so of course 2x is equal to e to the power of 4 minus 1 so x is going to be e to the power of 4 minus 1 by 2 I think they are expecting this much only. Now, now the C part is find the solution of the equation. It's a six mark question. F dash of X is equals to G inverse of X. F dash of X. So we'll have to differentiate this. Now, F dash of X. One second, I'll write here. F dash of X is equal to what? Ln of 2X plus 1. Again, we'll have to use chain rule. So it's going to be 1 upon 2X plus 1 because derivative of log X, uh, ln X is 1 by X into derivative of whatever is inside so derivative of 2x plus 1 is going to be 2 so it's going to be 2 upon 2x plus 1 now g inverse of x so we'll have to find g inverse of x so here uh, g of x is 5x minus 7 for finding the inverse all you have to do is you just have to make x as the subject so we'll just get g of x plus 7 sorry g of x plus 7 upon 5 is equal to x so g inverse of x what we will get so we will get g inverse of x is equal to x plus 7 upon 5 so you just have to solve this equation and this equation i think so i'll get quadratic let's see so we'll get 2 upon 2x plus 1 is equal to x plus 7 upon 5 so you just have to do this cross multiplication so you'll get 10 is equal to x plus 7 2x plus 1 that's it now just expand it so you'll get 2x square I'm just multiplying like this this and uh, 2x square plus x plus 14x plus 7 is equal to 10 now 2x square uh, plus 15x 10 I'll shift to the other side so it's going to be minus 3 is equal to 0 hmm now here splitting the middle term won't work b square minus 4ac definitely will work but I think you can use calculator and get the answer otherwise the value of x is going to be minus b so minus 15 plus minus under root b square so 15 square which is 225 minus 4 times 2 times minus 3 upon 2 times of a which is 2 times of 2 which is nothing but minus 15 plus minus under root uh, 6 18 so 32 242 root 242 upon 4 and it's too much of thing you can use calculator and get the values uh, so here uh, through calculator <coughs> you will get the two values the two values are uh, one second so it's 0 0.195 and minus 7.69 and uh, yeah now see these are the values of uh, I mean the solution the value of x we are getting but the thing is we have already been said that x is greater than minus 1 by 2 right so of course this won't be in the range uh, I mean in the domain so the only value of x would be x is equals to 0 0.195 that's gonna be the only answer okay so we'll have to just discard this value now fourth one 
the diagram shows the graph y is equals to mod of f of x where f of x is a cubic function of course because there are three roots you can see minus two one three uh, find the possible expressions of for f of x now see when they say s expression so obviously we'll have to find two expressions minimum okay so now here see these are the roots minus two one and three so of course the cubic function would be x plus two x minus one and x minus three because if i put x is equals to one three or minus two in this equation i will get these roots right but the thing is if i multiply two with minus one with minus three i'll get what i'll get two times minus one is minus two times minus three is plus six i'm getting that mod will make a difference but here we are getting six but here the y intercept is 24 so if i put x is equals to zero i am getting six here but i want 24 here so what i'll have to do i'll have to multiply by four so that's why it's going to be four times of this thing but since it is mod so it's going to be this or f of x would be minus four x plus two x minus one x minus three that's it now the b part on the axis below, sketch the graph of y is equal to mod of 2x plus 1 and the graph y is equals to mod of 4x minus 1, stating the coordinates of the point where the graph meet the coordinate axis. So now see, here, uh, mod of 2x plus 1, generally what I consider, I consider it as a line, like you can draw 2x plus 1, you can draw 4x plus mi 4x minus 1 line and just draw the mod graph so whenever it is negative it just you just have to make it positive so here if i consider 2x plus 1 just 2x plus 1 y is equals to 2x plus 1 just for reference i'll just consider two coordinates x and y if i put x is equals to 0 i'll get y is equals to 1 if i put y is equals to 0 i'll get x is equals to minus 1 by 2 so as you can see the coordinates are minus 1 by 2 and obviously mention uh, the co uh, x co uh, I mean the x intercepts and the y intercepts so minus 1 by 2 comma 0 and the other one is 0 comma 1 which is somewhere here let's say 0 comma 1 okay <clears throat> now for the other line here it is y is equals to 4x I mean I'll just consider y is equals to mod of 4x minus 4 so I'll consider a line which is 4x minus 4 again I'll make this box then x y values if I put x is equals to 0 y is equals to minus 4 if I put y is equals to 0 x is equals to 1 right so here 0 comma minus 4 would be one of the coordinates which is somewhere here mm, like this and 1 comma 0 which is somewhere here oh one second i made a mistake here minus 1 by 2 comma 0 we had so obviously minus 1 by 2 will come on the other side so it's going to be minus 1 by 2 comma 0 see i realized the mistake okay now all you have to do is you just have to draw this line so the normal line would have been like this but here we will just draw like this and whenever it is going down on the negative side we'll just make it positive it's going to be like this on the other hand if i talk about this green line so it will be like this and then it will go it will just be a reflection of this one it's somewhere like this one second and maybe like this yeah so here we go this is going to be the coordinate which is 0 comma 4 this was 0 comma minus 4 but this is going to be reflection so it's going to be 0 comma and of course mention the x intercepts so here it was 1 comma 0 minus 1 by 2 comma 0 and this was 0 comma 1 that's it and now they are asking find the exact solutions of the equation this so obviously it's a mod it's very simple so when I whenever I have mod uh, with equal to so I'll do 2x plus 1 is equal to minus I mean I can just consider minus 4x minus 1 or 2x plus 1 is equal to 4x minus 1 okay so here we'll get 2x plus 1 is equal to minus 4x plus 4 which I just want to keep the variable positive so I'll move minus 4x to the other side I'll get 6x is equal to 3 x is equal to 1 by 2 and on the other hand here uh, 2x plus 1 is equal to 4x minus 4 again I want to keep the variable positive so I'll move 2x to the other side and minus 4 to this side so it's going to be 5 is equal to 2x or x is equal to 5 by 2 
See, these are very silly, uh, like small, small things that uh, if you keep the variable positive, then you will avoid silly mistakes. Uh, after this, yeah, th those are the solutions basically. Yeah. So after this, fifth. Find the vector which is in opposite direction to 50 minus 8 and has a magnitude of 8.5. So see, we have to find, so we need to have a direction as well as magnitude. So here we, they have given that this is going to be the magnitude, but we want in the opposite direction of this thing. So first of all, for the magnitude, what we'll have to do, let me consider this thing as A. So we have A as 15 minus A. So what we'll do, we'll just find a unit vector in see this is the vector which they have given so what we'll do we'll first find a unit vector in like this is a so this is a cap so we'll find a unit vector in a's direction so all you have to do is you just have to divide by the magnitude because if the magnitude of a is 10 so if i divide by 10 that vector by a scalar multiple of 1 by 10 so we'll get a unit vector so a cap i would say a unit vector is going to be 1 by magnitude of this so 15 square plus 8 square which is 225 plus 64 289 so square root of that 17 so we'll get that 17 like of course it's like this this is 15 this is 8 i'm just avoiding that negative thing and uh, using pythagoras theorem you can find out this is going to be 17 so i'll just do 1 by 17 15 minus 8 now this is a unit vector in a's direction but i want in the opposite direction so i'll have to multiply by minus so minus a cap would be just uh, you don't have to mention but take a minus 1 by 17 15 minus 8 but now i want like the required vector so the required vector let's say it is b is going to be what so all you have to do is you just have to multiply by the magnitude of 8.5 so it's going to be 8.5 times minus 1 by 17 15 minus 8 so if you want to write it properly this is 1 this is 2 and uh, minus will get multiplied inside so it's going to be 1 by 2 15 with minus and 8 i just multiplied minus also inside so that's going to be the answer second part is find the values of a and b such that 5 times this 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 is equal to this i can see that there will be two equations two unknowns you just have to find the values of a and b so all i have to do is i just have to do the scalar multiple so it's going to be 15 a 5 b like this plus 2a plus 1 2 is equal to 6 i'll mul multiply inside 6b plus 6a 12. now obviously if a b is equal to c d then definitely a is equal to c and b is equal to d of course so it's going to be what so here i'll just make it 15a plus 2a 17a plus a whatever 70a plus 1 and this is going to be 5b plus 2 which is equal to 6b plus 6a and 12 now you just have to solve both the equations so we'll get 5b plus 2 is equal to 12 so 5b is equal to 10 and b is equal to 2 we didn't even get the simultaneous equation we just have to substitute now b is equal to 2 in the other equation the other equation is what so 17a plus 1 is equal to 6 times now i'll put the value of b in this equation i'll get 2 plus 6a again i like to keep the variable positive so I'll have to do is I'll have to sh shift the 6a to the other side. I'll get 11a and 12 minus 1 is equal to 11. I mean, whatever. So here we'll get a is equal to 1. So we got the values of a as 1 and b is equal to 2. Now sixth question. Write down the values of k for which the line y is equals to k is a tangent to the curve y is equals to 4 sin x plus pi by 4 plus 10. So whenever you get this x plus pi by 4 or something, you don't need to worry about it because it is not there in your syllabus, that phase shift and all. So you just have to consider this 4, this 10 and so on. So all you have to do is, see y is equal to k. Whenever you get this y is equals to k, understand that uh, it is nothing but a line parallel to x-axis. So here we are talking, we'll have to draw a rough diagram for this one. So here, this equation can be written as y minus 10 is equal to 4 sine x plus pi by 4. As I said, no need to worry about this pi by 4 thing. So here y minus 10, so that will decide the principal axis, so y minus 10. So whenever, like generally I say it like this, whenever it is y minus 2 is equals to f of, one second, y minus 2 is equals to f of x plus 3. 
so that means what the design will remain same this is valid for quadratic cubic i mean logarithmic everything so when i make a y minus 2 change that means what i'll make an op opposite change so it's going to be two steps up like this and x plus 3 that means what three steps on the horizontal side of x axis negative side of x axis so that's it so if it is cubic then uh, sorry quadratic then instead of being like this it is going to be like this so here also when i s when it is y minus 10 that means what the principal axis would be 10 from where it will go up and down then second thing is amplitude amplitude as it is four so it will take four step up and four step down so it's gonna vary from 14 to 6 and whatever this thing now okay what we care about we care about being uh, like this y is equals to k being a tangent so this will only happen at the extreme points that means what at uh, like of course the curve is going to be this way so either it will happen on this or on this so for which values since they have said so obviously two values so k is equal to 14 or k is equal to 6 now the b part show that this is equal to this now as you can see i have this as 1 plus tan theta upon 1 minus cos theta plus 1 minus tan theta upon 1 plus cos theta uh, okay so see as i can see on the right hand side it is all sine theta and all so the best way would be i think we should convert everything in terms of sine and cos but also i can see that uh, there is this 1 minus cos theta 1 plus cos theta so if i multiply this thing i'll get 1 minus cos square theta which is sine square theta so denominator is sorted now here all you have to do is you just have to do this cross multiplication then we will see whether we need to convert or not and obviously we'll have to so it's going to be 1 plus tan theta into 1 plus cos theta just too much of calculation is involved plus 1 minus tan theta into 1 minus cos theta upon this is going to be 1 minus cos square theta now obviously the denominator is going to be what denominator we are sure it's going to be sine square theta so we got the denominator now numerator you'll have to adjust so let's see one multiplied by this whole thing so it's going to be 1 plus cos theta plus tan theta plus tan theta into cos theta plus 1 minus cos theta minus tan theta plus minus into minus plus so minus tan theta into minus cos theta so it's going to be plus tan theta into cos theta okay now obviously some of the values will definitely get cancelled so i can see plus tan theta minus tan theta getting cancelled and uh, is that's it one second plus cos theta uh, plus cos theta minus cos theta also getting cancelled now there is only ta uh, one plus one is there so it's going to be two for sure i'll just keep this sine square theta as it is because i don't have much space so two and this tan theta into cos theta now see we know that tan theta is nothing but sine theta upon cos theta so the cos theta cos theta will get cancelled so at the end you will just get 2 plus uh, this is sine theta overall that's what I wanted to say this is nothing but your sine theta this is also your sine theta so you'll get 2 plus 2 sine theta upon sine square theta of course you can take out 2 common and you will get 1 plus sine theta upon sine square theta which is RHS since proof now hence solve the equation this thing by chance even if you don't get this question let's say but obviously you can use this in this to get those values of theta so here uh, we'll just use this thing so we'll get 2 times 1 plus sine theta upon sine square theta is equal to 3 now, of course remember one thing that whenever you get this kind of question here all you have to do is you just have to convert everything in terms of one trigonometric ratio maybe you will get something like this sine theta uh, is equals to 2 cos theta so you will just move this cos theta to the other side it will be tan theta is equal to 2 and then in short the main purpose is to convert everything in terms of one trigonometric ratio so here we got it it is in terms of sine theta so we'll just solve this equation so we'll just multiply 2 inside so 2 plus 2 sine theta is equal to 3 sine square theta now I want to keep this positive so I'll move everything on the right hand side so it's going to be 3 sine square theta minus 2 sine theta minus 2 is equal to 0 now definitely 
whenever you get three terms is equal to zero definitely it's always going to be quadratic so all you have to do is you just have to solve the quadratic if you're not comfortable with sine theta just consider sine theta is x and then solve quadratic replace that x with sine theta and get the value but here i'll just do it as it is now three into two is nothing but six we'll have to factorize six in such a way whose difference is generally splitting the middle term will work whose difference is two? Oh, it's not possible <laughs> generally it works but here it didn't so i would suggest you directly use calculator and get the values otherwise it's going to be sine theta is equal to something and sine theta is equal to something so here minus b so 2 plus under root b square minus 4 ac so 4 minus 2 ac so 6 12 16 one second what am i doing uh, so 4 so sorry 4 12 24 so it's going to be 24 right one second okay let's not use shortcut so 4 minus 4 times 3 times minus 2 so yeah 28 so it's going to be what it's got upon 2 times of a 2 times of 3 and here on the other hand it's going to be sine theta is equal to this thing 2 minus under root uh, 12 24 for 28 so it's going to be 28 by 6 yeah but see the thing is here they are expect uh, like they expect that you can use calculator and get the values the thing is if you do it like this remember here i feel that it is positive like 2 minus root 28 by 6 but it is not this value is negative so if you do that sign inverse thing make sure that you consider these as decimal values so that you get the proper inverse thing and all so here i'll just take the calculator values so sine theta is equal to something and sine theta is equal to something uh, so here I think uh, you will get 2 plus one second root 28 upon 6 and this 2 minus root 28 upon 6 also if you see here 2 plus root 28 so obviously this value is uh, greater than 6 the numerator value so but sign can only be between minus 1 and 1 the range of sign so that's why this value won't work so we'll have only this value and this is minus 0 0.5485 of course all you have to do is you just have to take sine inverse of 0 0.5485 so which is hmm. so here you just uh, so it is 33.26 by the way so sine inverse of 0 0.5485 is 33.26 now obviously since it is negative and we know that sine is negative in third and fourth quadrant so that's why we will consider theta as obviously we'll have to write it properly that sine theta is equal to sine of something then sine theta is equal to sine of something so here as you can see it is in third and fourth quadrant so we'll consider 180 plus theta and 180 minus theta uh, sorry 360 minus theta in case if you want to uh, i mean if you want to recap this trigonometry thing so i'll put the video in description which you can check it out you can revise the whole 20 minutes of theory the whole trigonometry will be done also there are five six questions which i have taken which will cover almost your 90 percent of the syllabus i mean 90 percent of the type of questions which can come for trigonometry so definitely check that out anyways so this is going to be 213.26 and uh, 360 minus 33 which is going to be 326.74 so these are your values 213.26 and 326.74 now next okay now the next one the first three terms of arithmetic progressions are log 3 log 3 log 3 5 log 3 given that okay arithmetic progression okay given that the sum to n terms of this progression can be written as 256 log 81 find the value of n so obviously you'll have to use this sum of a p so here as you can see the first term is log 3 okay the second term u2 i will consider as 3 log 3 now since they have given it is of course a p so common difference would be what it's going to be second term minus first term so 3 log 3 minus log 3 which is 2 log 3 or log 9 if you want to consider now what they have given they have given sn 
is like sn is 256 log 81 right and we know the formula for sn it's going to be n by 2 generally i prefer first term plus last term but here uh, since we know a and common difference d so we'll have to use that formula so it's going to be 2a plus n minus 1 into common difference d now it's too much of logs will be involved so let's try <coughs> we need to find the value of n so n by 2 2 a a is what log 3 so 2 log 3 plus n minus 1 into common difference common difference is 2 log 3 is equal to 256 log 81 now uh, this is going to be n I'll move this 2 to the other side so it's going to be n 2 log 3 plus 2n log 3 minus 2 log 3 is equal to 256 times 2 so 512 log 81 okay now uh, this 2 log 3 and minus 2 log 3 will get cancelled you will get 2 n square log 3 is equal to 512 log 81 okay now see here uh, what we can do we can move this log 3 to this side so what we will get we will get 2 n square is equal to 512 log 81 by log 3 now we are going to use this base change formula right you know that log a i mean l o g log a to the base b is nothing but log a by log b so we are just going to use opposite of it so we'll just move this 3 there and 2 this is going to be 256 so we'll get n square is equal to 256 this is log 81 to the base 3 and log 81 3 to the power of what is 81 it's going to be 4 so n square is equals to 256 times 4 now generally i prefer that uh, i mean not multiplying it rather than taking square root directly <coughs> so it's going to be what uh, n is equal to plus minus square root of 256 6 into 2 so n is equals to plus minus 32 now n is the number of terms but number of terms cannot be negative so the only answer n will be n is equal to 32 would be the only answer okay now gp the b part the first three terms of a geometric progression the first three terms they have given so a is this time ln 256 u2 is ln 16 okay now since they are in gp so the this time common ratio would be next term upon previous term so it's going to be ln 16 upon ln 256 so this is going to be uh, ln again <clears throat> 16 to the base of 256 now 256 to the power of what is 16 now see again i can use this tick mark rule again here if you want if you are getting confused we need to find the value of x again we'll use this tick mark rule 16 is equals to 256 to the power of x now 256 to the power of what will give me 16 of course square root so it's going to be what it's going to be 1 by 2 now find the sum to infinity of this progression given your answer in the form giving your answer in the form of p ln 2 so s infinity we know it's going to be a upon 1 minus r remember for sn for geometric sequence it's a into r to the power of n minus 1 upon r minus 1 or 1 minus r to the power of n upon 1 minus r anything is fine at the end you will get the same result but if the common ratio is lesser than one so n if it is s to infinity so remember that it is going to be a into this is obviously going to be zero because uh, common ratio is one by two kind of a stuff so one by two to the power of infinity is what it's one by two to the power of infinity which is one by huge number infinity which is going to be zero so it's going to be a into one upon one minus r so which is a upon one minus r and here a is what it's ln 256 one minus uh where is it one second one minus common ratio one by two yeah so this is going to be one minus one by two half so two will go up so two ln 256 now they are asking to write in the form of sorry they are asking you to write in the form of p ln two so obviously we can write 256 as two to the power of how much so two to the power of 10 is one zero two four nine is five and two 8 would be 256 and 8 will bring it down again one of the log properties which is going to be 16 ln 2 that's going to be the answer
Now let's do the eighth one. Find the exact coordinates of the point of intersection of the curve y is equals to this and the y is e and the line this. So I think it's a part of indices as well as quadratic. So let's see. So here this y this y both are equal so at the end you just have to substitute so we can write x square plus 2 root 5x minus 20 is equal to 3 root 5x plus 10 now shift everything on the left hand side so we'll get x square uh, 2 root 5x minus 3 root 5x will give me like it's like uh, 2 root 5 minus 3 root 5 it's like 2x minus 3x it is minus x so it's going to be what it's going to be minus root 5x i hope you got it then uh, minus 20 and 10 you shift it to the other side it's going to be minus 30 is equals to 0 now of course since there are thirds and all so all you have to do is you just have to use the formula method for this thing so we'll get x uh, is equal to so minus b so minus of minus root 5 plus minus under root b square so minus root 5 square minus 4 times ac so 1 into minus 30 upon 2 times of 8 so 2 times of 1 so which is going to be root 5 plus minus under root mostly you will get a perfect square here so 5 and uh, 120 but this time it didn't is it yeah 120 plus 5 yeah 125 we are getting so root 5 plus minus root 125 by 2 Let's see if you're able to solve it once again. So this is going to be root 5 plus minus. Now, uh, 125 is, I mean, root 125 is nothing but 25 into 5. So it's going to be 5 root 5. So it's going to be plus minus 5 root 5 by 2. So we'll get two values of x. 1x would be <coughs> root 5 plus 5 root 5 upon 2. And the other x would be root 5 minus 5 root 5 upon 2. So obviously x is going to be 6 root 5 by 2 which is 3 root 5 and here x is going to be uh, root 5 minus 5 root 5 so minus 4 root 5 by 2 which is minus 2 root 5. Uh, now see they are looking for the coordinates so generally people forget that uh, they are asking for coordinates so what we will have to do we will have to find the y values as well. Now obviously there are two choices either you can substitute in this equation x square 2 root 5x and so on but obviously we won't prefer that we will prefer this understand it's like this. Uh, maybe this is like this curve and this is this curve so we are getting these two points now obviously even if you substitute in this curve or in this curve we got these coordinates so it will satisfy both the equations but obviously we will use the easier one which is 3 root 5x plus 10 so y would be what once again what was it 3 root 5x plus 10 so 3 root 5 and this time x would be 3 root 5 plus 10 and here also y is equals to 3 root 5 into minus 2 root 5 plus 10 so here you will get 9 times 5 45 45 plus 10 55 and here uh, minus 6 minus 6 times 5 minus 30 plus 10 ah, okay we'll solve it 3 into 2 uh, 3 into minus 2 minus 6 minus 6 6 into 5 is minus 30 plus 10 so you'll get y is equal to minus 20 so the coordinates are 3 root 5 comma 55 and uh, mi uh, minus 2 root 5 comma minus 20 so these are the values after this now the b part of it is once again uh, it is given that tan theta is equals to this find cosec square theta in the form of a plus b root 3 so they are asking you to use trigonometric identities so they are asking cosec square theta <coughs> in the form of a plus b root 3 now see uh, one second so we have tan theta as this thing and cosec square theta is what they are looking for. So one. So maybe what we can do, we can use cos, uh, like we can use cot square theta and then with respect, uh, like since we know tan theta, we know cot theta and we can use that. Now see one plus cot square theta, which we know the identity, it is one plus cot square theta is equal to cosec square theta. So obviously cosec square theta would be cot, uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean cosec square theta would be 1 plus cot square theta. Now tan theta is this thing root 3 minus 1. So cot theta would be what? Cot theta would be 2 plus just reciprocal. So 2 plus root 3 upon root 3 minus 1. Now cosec square theta is 1 plus cot square theta. So here it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus root 3 upon 
root 3 minus 1 whole square right now yeah this is all now indices so you'll have to solve it so it's gonna be and we, they are looking for cosec square theta only so we'll have to solve it and then we'll have to rationalize it to get into the form of a plus b root 3 so we'll get 1 plus so expand this thing so 2 a plus b whole square so it's gonna be a square so 4 plus b square 3 plus 2 times a b so 2 times 2 root 3 which is 4 root 3 upon root 3 minus 1 whole square again 3 plus 1 minus 2 root 3 into 1 so minus 2 root 3 so we'll get 1 plus 7 plus 4 root 3 upon 4 minus 2 root 3 again we just have to add this one to it so again it's going to be 4 minus 2 root 3 cross multiplication thing plus 7 plus 4 root 3 upon 4 minus 2 root 3 which is too much of calculation so 4 plus 7 11 minus 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3 is going to be plus 2 root 3 upon 4 minus 2 root 3 as it is now all you have to do is since you have to get it in the form of a plus b root 3 so we'll have to rationalize so we'll multiply by 4 plus 2 root 3 upon 4 plus 2 root 3 denominator is simple it's just going to be a square minus b square so it's going to be 4 square minus 2 root 3 square and this we'll have to just use this double bracket thing so you just have to expand it so 11 times 4 plus 2 root 3 you can skip this step directly you can solve but check yeah 4 plus 2 root 3 so you'll get 44 plus 22 root 3 plus 8 root 3 2 root 3 into 2 root 3 so it's going to be 4 into 3 which is 12 plus 12 upon this is going to be 16 minus 2 square is 4 4 into 3 12 16 minus 12 uh, whatever so now 44 plus 12 we'll just combine the this non-solved form together so 44 plus 12 is going to be 56 plus 30 root 3 upon 16 minus 12 which is 4 so what they're asking they're asking you to write in the form of a plus b root 3 where a and b are constants now see sometimes they give you a and b are integers so if you get a rational number then obviously you are wrong but here i just check because i was getting a rational number so if you want you can divide it by two numerator and denominator or you can separate it from the numerator so 56 by 4 so we can write this thing as 14 plus 15 by 2 root 3 that's your answer after this ninth a circle center o and radius r centimeter has a sector oab of fixed area 10 centimeter square okay angle aob is theta radians and the perimeter of the sector is p find an expression for p in terms of r you see uh, sector oab of fixed area now see area of sector they have given so area of oab is 10 angle theta and the perimeter of the sector is p find an expression in terms of r or find an expression for p in terms of r so now see we have uh, area of sector is fixed which is aob so half r square theta is equal to 10 so r square theta is equal to 20 okay uh, now let's talk about perimeter first now perimeter is going to be what perimeter is going to be like if you talk about this sector so it's going to be r plus r plus r theta like length of r plus this thing so it's going to be r plus r plus r theta which is 2r plus r theta now we don't want theta we want in terms of r so all i have to do is this is theta is nothing but 20 by r square so i'll just substitute this here so i'll get 2r plus r into 20 by r square which will give me 2r plus 20 by r that's going to be the perimeter now find the value of r for which p has a stationary value basically derivative so all you have to do is so perimeter they have given which is 2r plus 20 by r so you have to find the value of r so that it has a stationary value that that means what we'll just have to differentiate it and we have to equate it to zero so it's going to be 2 plus first of all let's just modify this thing uh this is going to be one second p is equal to 2r plus 20 into r to the power of minus one so dp by dr differentiating with respect to r it's going to be 2 minus 20 into r to the power of minus 2 i just move this minus 1 down so it's going to be 2 minus 20 by r square right now we just need to equate it to 0 so 
टू माइनस ट्वेंटी बाई आर स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी विल गेट ट्वेंटी बाई आर स्क्वायर अगेन कीपिंग द वेरिएबल पॉजिटिव इज इक्वल टू टू सो वील गेट आर स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू टेन सो आर इज इक्वल्स टू प्लस माइनस रूट टेन बट ऑब्वियसली वील जस्ट कंसिडर द पॉजिटिव रूट टेन डिटर्माइन द नेचर ऑफ स्टेशनरी वैल्यू ना सी आर इज इक्वल एट दिस वी हैव आई मीन वट एवर वेदर इट्स मैक्सिम और मिनिम सो ऑल यू हैव टू डू इज अगेन वील डिफ्रेंशिएट दिस थिंग सो वी नो दैट डी पी बाई डी आर इज टू माइनस ट्वेंटी इंटू आर टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस टू सो वील डू डी टू पी बाई डी आर स्क्वायर डेरेवेटिव ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट जीरो एंड दिस गॉन बी प्लस फोर्टी सो फोर्टी इंटू आर टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस थ्री ना ऑब्वियसली इवन इफ आई पुट नेगेटिव वैल्यू तो ऑफकोर्स वी वॉन्ट पुट सो इफ इफ आई पुट दिस आर इज इक्वल्स टू रूट टेन इन दिस इक्वेशन वील गेट पॉजिटिव सो डी टू बाई पी बाई डी आर स्क्वायर एट आर इज इक्वल्स टू रूट टेन वुड बी वॉट इज गॉन बी फोर्टी फोर्टी बाय रूट टेन क्यूब विच इज ग्रेटर दैन जीरो सो दे फॉर इट इज मैक्सिमम Now they are asking what find the value of theta at this stationary value. So now r is equals to root ten. We already know theta is equals to twenty by r square. So twenty by r square, which is root ten square, which is going to be twenty by ten, which is two radian. Now the tenth one, the normal to the curve y is equals to tan three x plus pi by two at point p with coordinates p comma minus one. Where p is between zero and pi by six meets the x-axis at point A and y-axis at point B. Find the exact coordinates of the midpoint of AB. So basically, you just have to find the equation of normal. Then uh, you have to get the x-intercept, y-intercept, and uh, just get the midpoint of those things by using x one plus x two by two, y one plus y two by two. Ten mark question. Okay, fine. So first of all, for normal, normal means what? It's just a line, and we need to find. dy by dx at whatever these values okay fine so now uh, for also for dy by dx we will require uh, the x coordinate as well which we don't know so we'll substitute there so p one second sorry why so we'll just at uh, at the point p Where coordinates are p comma minus one. So what all I have to do is I'll just have to substitute. So minus one is equal to tan three p plus pi by two. Now see tan one second tan three p plus pi by two is equal to minus one. We just have to solve it. So tan three p plus pi by two. Now see tan is negative. Tan is negative in second and third quadrant, right? And it is in radian. So it's going to be tan of something or tan 3p plus pi by 2 again is going to be tan of something now see tan inverse of 1 we already know which is pi by 4 but we are looking for the negative values so tan is negative in second and fourth quadrant so here it's going to be second quadrant pi minus theta right like this astc those two things only you need to remember uh theta this is 180 minus theta or pi minus theta here this is pi plus theta and this is 2 pi minus theta so here we will consider uh this negative tan so it's going to be pi minus pi by 4 and here we will get tan of 2 pi minus pi by 4 right so we'll get 3p plus pi by 2 is equal to uh 3 pi by 4 or here 3p plus pi by 2 is equal to uh 2 pi minus uh, sorry uh 8 7 pi by 4 Correct. Now you just have to solve the value for p. So three p is equal to three pi by four minus two pi by four. It's gonna be pi by four. Yeah. So p is equal to what? P is equal to pi by twelve. Or here, three uh, p is equal to again two pi five pi by four. So we'll get p is equal to five pi by twelve. Okay. Now see. Uh, They have given that p is between zero and pi by six. So definitely zero pi by six is almost thirty degree. Almost like it's it's going to be thirty degree. But five pi by twelve is almost like half pi. So obviously it is near ninety degree. I would say. So obviously this value we won't consider. One second. 
yeah this value we won't consider so we'll consider only this p is equal to pi by 12 so we got the coordinate now the coordinate is pi by 12 comma minus 1 okay so this is the first part of getting the coordinate now we need to find equation of normal where the coordinate is pi by 12 comma minus 1 and we need to find the gradient gradient is what we need to figure it out so here we can just use your derivative so y is equals to tan 3x plus pi by 2 y is equal to tan 3x plus pi by 2 one second so all you have to do is you just have to differentiate so dy by dx is equal to derivative of tan is nothing but 6 square so 6 square 3x plus pi by 2 into chain rule of course derivative of whatever is inside so derivative of 3x plus pi by 2 is going to be 3 if you are finding difficulties in derivatives definitely you can check out the revision course so where i have again solved five six questions and theory basic from start to end which will hardly take 20 to 25 minutes okay so dy by dx is equals to 6 square 3x plus pi by 2 into derivative of whatever is inside it's going to be 3 we need to find dy by dx i mean gradient at uh, x is equal to pi by 12 so we'll get what we'll get 6 square 3 times pi by 12 so 3 into pi by 12 plus pi by 2 multiplied by 3 remember that 3 is outside of course so it's going to be 6 square uh pi by 4 plus pi by 2 okay pi by 4 plus pi by 2 uh, so in degrees it's very easy so it's just 135 degree but once again here we will just write it in terms of pi only 3 1 this is going to be 4 so 3 pi by 4 6 square 3 pi by 4 think okay, i'll just make 3 here and finally the answer is going to be what 6 square 3 pi by 4 so uh, it's pi minus pi by 4 so i mean obviously it's a reciprocal of cos and all so it's going to be i mean uh, cos of pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 that square is 1 by 2 so here it's going to be 2 so the, here the gradient finally would be 6 okay mm, obviously i can just put here cos pi by 4 is nothing but 1 by root 2 we are squaring it so it's going to be 1 by 2 and we are reciprocating it because it is sec so that's why it's going to be 2 so we got the gradient of the tangent now okay so now we got the gradient of the tangent now the next part uh, one second <laughs> so here now gradient is minus 1 by 6 and the coordinate is pi by 12 comma minus 1 so the equation of normal would be what it's gonna be like generally i use this thing y minus y1 upon x minus x1 is nothing but the gradient m so here it's gonna be y plus 1 upon x minus pi by 12 is equal to minus 1 by 6 so we'll just move 6 to the other side so we'll get 6y plus 6 is equal to minus x plus pi by 12 so if you want I mean you can write it in this form that is x plus 6y is equal to pi by 12 minus 6 or maybe y is equals to mx plus c whichever it's your choice now, what they're asking final part is that uh, you have to find find the exact coordinates of the midpoint of a b first of all we need to find the coordinates of a and b so these are nothing but the x-intercept and y-intercept just let me get clear x-axis at a so x-axis at a so here x axis at a one second, i may have to use this blank page as well so here it's like this this might be the normal so here this is the a coordinate this is your b coordinate and we need to find the midpoint of it so for a coordinate so all you have to do is a coordinate is uh, x comma zero x comma zero and i'll consider a comma zero and b coordinate as zero comma b so i'll just substitute it to get the values of a and b so for x intercept i'll have to put y is equals to zero so i'll get x plus 0 is equal to pi by 12 minus 6 okay and uh, for y intercept or i'll just write x is equals to pi by 12 minus 6 and for y we will get uh, we'll just put x is equals to 0 so we'll get 6y is equals to pi by 12 minus 6 right so y is equal to 
pi by we are getting a huge number 72 minus 6 sorry minus 1 so these are the values which we are getting now obviously we want midpoint of it so it's gonna be x1 plus x2 upon 2 y1 plus y2 upon 2 simply it's gonna be a by 2 and b by 2 so here the coordinates will be a by 2 so this by 2 so pi by 12 minus 6 by 2 and pi by 72 minus 1 by 2 and finally the midpoint would be pi by 24 minus 3 and pi by 144 minus 1 by 2 so that's your answer so that's how we have finished the paper in uh, in an hour so obviously you will get a lot of time I mean if you solve it like this then you will get a quarter uh, quite a lot of time to reevaluate this thing if you are there with me till here then if you like the video please give a like and share as much as possible thank you